Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Mayor. It's a, it's a great stage and platform that, that you have built in Central CDC. Uh, this evening, I would like to thank you for giving your time here for, to be here with us uh, and, and to hear about what we do at Old School and City College. So, we are still trying to figure things out. Uh, the world is very dynamic. I, I won't have any... The solution today may not be the solution tomorrow. So I'm just here to share about some of our exciting stories and also some of our heartaches for you to know that uh, everyone screw up, you know, from time to time. The important thing is about how you rebound, how you, how you recover from that. Uh, anybody play basketball here? Okay. In basketball, one of the... One, one of the roles that some players have is to catch the rebound. Okay, and then there is a saying that says, whoever that controls the rebound controls the game. The game was designed for failures. Most of the time, field goal percentage is only about 50%. It means half the time the ball doesn't go in. So, the, so teams have to be prepared when the ball doesn't go in. And in life, it is like that, all right? Um, a study by U.S. shows that only 30% of companies will make it through the 10-year mark. 70% of enterprises will actually fail. So you have to fail pretty a lot of times in order to get, to get through, all right? So today I'm going to share a little bit of some of our challenges and all that, and then I hope that that will encourage you as well. I, I don't think we should just talk about good stuff. You know, there are some of the stuff that I think we can share, then, then you feel all right, you know. In 2006, um, we started old school. I used to dance when I was in uh, junior college. When I was younger, I, I suffered, uh, I struggled with self-esteem quite a bit. I remember I had a bit of acne problem when I go into the toilet, I don't even dare to face the mirror. And the thing about dancing is this, in order for you to be a dancer, you have to face the mirror. You have to look yourself in the mirror and you have to accept how ugly your lines look. Then you make correction and you can change. So dance really helped me a lot. Like this, this man over here, you know, he's called Ryan, okay? He can just easily bring up the flick here and then there, no problem. He can go down on the split, come up, go down, no, anytime. And then he wasn't even formally trained. No need training, also can. And, and when he choreographed a piece of dance, all you have to do is listen to the music. Yeah, okay, up, let's go. So, da, 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 da. For me, I can practice for a very long time. And then by the time you go to class, you forget every move already. So there are people that are gifted in that. If he, he lived in the days, you know, of the Spartans, he'll be part of the 300, right? If he day, lived in the days of Sun Kuo, right, he most likely is Zhao Yun already. Very good with the body, you know? Nowadays, all you need to do is to be very good with your thumb. And it will be unfortunate for people that are talented like that to be stuck behind a desk because there are no jobs for them, okay? So that really bothered me because I said, no, you bring certain color to the world, all right? This color has to be present. So let's try to make things happen. So, so I, I, I was crazy enough to say, ah, I think we can create a business to let it work, all right? So that's how we started old school. So I went around Singapore and, and, and I think that I'm a sports scout. You know? I go and check out every dance competition and then I find the best dancer. You know? So I just gathered all of them. I say, if I, I have the best dancers and I make them exclusive, they're going to be very good. All right? So our first class only have like one person that show up <laughs> in the class, but, but we persisted. Today, a lot of our classes are hitting 45 per class. And this is a number that you don't even find in Taiwan, you don't even find it in Japan. All right? It is a number equivalent to what Broadway Dance Center in New York is seeing. And we don't even have a thriving Broadway scene. So I think I'm very humbled to see that. I'm going to show you a short video clip about of what we do at old school. Right?
One, one of the key uh, game changers we did, we did two things. Firstly, we allow every class to be affordable. Most conventionally, most dance schools, what they do is like, you attend one class, you pay $25. But if you buy the unlimited package, you know, you pay $100 every month, you can go for all the class. Then they sell you the package and then they hope that you don't show up. So after you buy the package, they no longer call you. Nobody will call you. Only after it expires, then they start calling you. Hi, have you been going to the gym? You know, because if everybody show up, they will not be able to feel everyone. Right? So we didn't want to do that because we want young people to be able to afford. So we lowered our prices. Another thing we did is that uh, we videoed down every class and then we posted it up on YouTube. Last time, uh, dance schools, when they run class, they will close the curtains so that the purpose, people outside can't see what is happening on the inside. Okay? So I discovered a little secret because I noticed that when one class is going on and then the next class, the folks are coming and then they peep inside the glass door, right? Then I noticed that people inside dance with more energy. Then I know, ah, they didn't come to learn dance, they come to be seen. So I wrote them, you know, every week pick a few to let them have their five seconds of ba -ba, ho, either moment, put it on YouTube, they share. And then they start to bring their friends. Free marketing. All right? And then right now, I heard that instructors in Thailand are watching our videos conduct class over there. One, one class in old school, they can teach for one month. You know, generating, creating jobs overseas as well. We did something else. We start to ticket our events because we believe that, let's say if we want people to value something, then you have to price it. You cannot always give it free. Nothing is free. Somebody is paying for it. So we try to develop the, econ the, the economy of dance. So for all of our events, we ticket them. We don't ticket them very high. We allow people to come. And then we make sure that for whatever they pay for when they come, is worth much more than that. And they start to queue. They start to queue four hours before the thing. I mean, we start to have sellouts. I want to share with you. Now we kind of live in the age of selfies, right? Selfie, selfie, and, and all. You know? So it comes from the word self. Okay? So we were a little concerned about that in the dance world. So we start to see that dance clubs, they start to say, oh, who is the strongest dancer? And then it's a weak dancer. So I don't, want to, I don't want this person to be in the middle. I don't want this person to be in our club. And then they start to break up, all right? And in, in Singapore, we have this problem, all right? Okay, this is a, a shot from the market. We have a lot of people, okay? All right, that's, that's the fact. In, in a very small space, okay? So we borrowed this concept and we turn it into a dance competition called Super 24, all right? We want to use congestion to create bonding, okay, all right? So in this dance competition, you are only as strong as your weakest member. In order for you to join, you need to find 23 other friends. You can't join alone, so you need to have 24 to qualify. Right? Next, you have to dance within an 8 meter by 8 meter square. You cannot go outside. If you step on the line, there will be a foul. We want to create something consistent so that it can scale like sports. And then somehow we make it even harder, we are like sadistic, you know. You will be judged from four sides. Means that there is no back. Okay? Normally in dance, you put the weakest dancer right at the back and then the front can count. You can't. Going on four sides. That's why we say every dancer count, okay? So let me show you the rules. Super 24, set in a square ring of eight by eight meters. The clock will start ticking down from 30 seconds. Use it wisely to break ground for your fight. The battle horn will sound for your 90 second short lived battle. Be bold, be ambitious, for you will have to impress not one, but four of the most demanding experts in the field up close. They will be scrutinizing you on teamwork, choreography, musicality, and undeniably skills. If that's not challenging enough, 
Every side will be guarded by linesmen who are specially trained. Any step detected beyond the line will be marked as a minus 0.5 penalty deducted from your judge's score. The fifth penalty will result in a fall of one placing, and that could mean the end of your championship. Only two of the top contenders will battle head-on one last time. So send forth 24 of your Supremes, because in this battle, every little fault and every major stunt matters. Every dancer counts. Okay, so we, we did this thing. So on the surface, it's a dance competition. But at the end, what we are trying to create is an experience that will build values. So the values that we are building is team. They have to join as a team. They can't be alone. And the thing about this thing is that once you are a part of it, when you quit, right, the team will have a problem. You will let down 23 others. So there is this social ransom going on, on the inside. Right? So all of them, there is a lot that goes through them when they go through the whole preparation phase. Okay? They have to go as one. Right? Next thing is that they have to develop trust. Okay? In dance, we have what we call blocking, means changing of position. And because they are judged from four sides, a lot of time when they move, they have to move backwards like this. And then when you are shifting, so in a, such a tight space, so when you move backward, you need to trust that this guy will move at the correct timing. You cannot do this. Oh, oh, like that. Low score. Okay, so you look at the picture like that. You see, they toss the guy in the sky. And then everybody else must just stand in place. They cannot have like, everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 cannot. So this guy has to absolutely trust he'll be caught. Change, all right? If they don't trust each other, when they're done, they look at each other, gone. Okay, so they have to trust. Okay, next, they will develop tenacity. It is a very tough competition. And the thing is this, right after they are peace, they are judged immediately. Score come out already. They don't even see it at the end. And then you see, many, this is the winning group. You see the way they cry. You look at this one. Whoa, look at this one. See, all have their face on it. It's like, it's guaranteed one. Every year we see they win the weight. Sometimes I get curious, how is it like to be inside? <laughs> and I better not, better not. Right, okay. Okay. Then, of course, they also learn technique skills. You can't be good just by being passionate alone. You have to be good. And this is what we want Singaporeans to get. These are the values that we want Singaporeans to have. Singapore is a team. We are congested, but we are a team. As long as we can move together, everything will be fine. Right? Congested, never mind. As long as everyone is coordinated. Sui sui. I go to Japan, also very congested, but they are a team. They are organized. Right? You go up the escalator, everybody stand one side one. No need to have signs. During peak hour, gantry is open. But everybody will tap. When the earthquake happens, everybody go and queue. Because they are a team. Very strong culture. They have high trust. Okay? Trust is such an expensive commodity. There's a the reason why the padlock industry is still around is because there's no trust. The reason why we even need security guards and it's because there's no trust. Right? Trust is very expensive. All right? Tenacity is so important. Singapore is an island. We are constantly under pressure on all sides. There will be times they are up, but there will be guaranteed there will be times they will go down. It's part of the life cycle. And we need our next generation to be able to weather through that. All right? And ultimately, there need to be technique. You need to have skills. You need to constantly upgrade yourself. You can't just do it through passion and YOLOs alone. All right? So these are the things that we built in. I'm going to show you how it has grown. This is 2012, when we first introduced it. It's uh, piloted by Southwest CDC. This is 2013. Okay, all right. With no mainstream media publicity, just word of mouth. All right. By 2014, we are able to ticket the finals at Suntec City. This year, we reached 10,000 people through this one event alone, and it's sell out for all of it. And right? we have to turn away hundreds of people. We did the qualifiers as part of Shine Festival, which we have the road closure. So I think it's good. That I show you a, a short clip of the qualifiers that we did to let you have a sense of the, the, 
atmosphere behind it, okay? observations that we make from this competition, all right, it grew from 14 groups to a total of 51 groups over four years. So you multiply that by 24, we have like thousands of participants. All right? And the interesting thing is this, the prizes for the competition were never published. Never. Nobody knows what they're going to win. All right? The truth is that I don't have much to give them. Most of the time, dance con, you see the poster, right? 5,000, 10,000, I, I, I don't have much, right? This is, there is a seed grant from National Youth Council, but we stretch every single inch, right? And the thing is, nobody asks. No, no, nobody asks about the price. It's not about the money. It's very interesting, all right? The only publicity channel was via social media and, and networks, right? And then we managed to sell out 44,000 tickets in 2015, all right? So when we say that young people, you know, they are restless and no energy, it's not true. They have it on the inside. It's about how we, we tap into them, how we motivate them and how we stir them up. That there is hope, all right, in, in this whole thing. And something good can come out of Singapore, all right? In the US, you have The Voice. You have American Idol. In Singapore, you can have Super 24. It is uniquely to our story and to our advantage. Okay? We can be creative. Okay? Now, I want to share... Ah, this one is quite interesting. They found pride in completing the journey, even though they may not be top place. Okay? Everybody said something like this. It doesn't matter if we don't win. 
the process is unforgettable. It's like a marathon. Okay, now nowadays a lot of people like to go for runs. Nobody say I didn't get first. Right? Complete can really finish. It's about the journey. Alright? Okay? So that's that's something very encouraging. Now I want to share something that's a lot closer, a lot closer to my heart. If you say that old school is the second child, City College is my first first child, my first baby, alright? This is uh, Jason. Jason didn't do well in PSLE. He was streamed to read the normal tech. Didn't do well in normal tech as well. And then the, the courses that were offered to him at IT wasn't what he wanted to do. So suddenly one day he had an idea. He wanted to do the O levels. He wanted to get to university. Just like that. Alright? So he enrolled into our school. He finished well enough to go into Millennium Institute. And when he wanted to go to MI, I actually counseled him. I said that, are you sure you want to go into MI? Right? Singapore A level is very competitive one. If you are not in the top five JC, very hard one. I said, no, 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 Mr. Kenny, I want to go. So I, I think I take my word back. He graduated as the top student over at MI, right? Straight A's. And then he did something even far exceeded what I imagined. He was offered a scholarship to study in England. He turned it down because he wanted to stay with his mum. So now he's reading law at SMU and next time he wants to be a community lawyer. Wow. So I, I felt very humbled to be able to be a part of the process. I'm going to show you a short video as well okay, of what we do. When we started City College back in 2002, uh, first of all, we want to provide second opportunities for individuals who needed them. And that is the genesis of our GC O-Level program. We designed the program in such a way that uh, we want the barriers of entry to be lower, so there are no strict rules about their dressing, they can come with their body art. We want finances to be taken out of the equation, so that's why we make the fees uh, very affordable in installments and all. Most of the students that come over to City College find it difficult to fit into the mainstream school. I find it a challenge for me to always come up with different methods and style to engage them. So my main purpose for my lesson, I always remember, is not to bring them back to the same experience that they had in their past schools, but is to create a brand new experience here in City College. And here at City College, I have the freedom to do so. success to the teachers and staff at City College. Before commencing the course, I never imagined that I could take on such a challenge as to sit for the O-level examinations. That is because at my previous secondary school, I struggled to cope with my schoolwork, an influx of subjects and my own high expectations. As a result, my studies suffered badly and I developed an eating disorder for which I was hospitalised for treatment. After coming out from the hospital, going back to school was even harder. I had to repeat SEC 2 twice and I eventually dropped out from school. I wandered aimlessly for the next four years, was in and out of depression, and I just didn't know what to do with my life. I remember when I was in the hospital, I shared my story with another patient who was also around my age. She told me about this great private school that helped students who were struggling with their own personal issues and were also failing in the public system. And that great school is none other than City College. So in 2013, I enrolled in the City College O-Level Preparatory course. Honestly, I didn't have any positive expectations of how things would work out. I guess I wasn't confident because in the past, I would always drop out of things halfway, never finishing what I start. But in City College, 
I had the best subject teachers offering endless devotion and patience to us, and I think that really helped me to excel in this year's O levels. I attained 6 points for my L1 R4. Joining CZ College has completely changed my life. I would really encourage others who struggle with their studies to do the same. When we first started SOAD, can you say something to me? Say, if it takes a hundred times of failures before a student can achieve his first success, he would want to build a safe environment in SOAD to allow this student to experience his first 100 failures. So in SOAD, we don't teach creativity. We build an environment safe enough for students to dare to fail. When they fail, we are there to cushion them. And we believe that by creating such an environment, our students will dare to dream again, will dare to chase after their dreams, and eventually achieving their dreams. One of our students by the name of Aaron Lowe is a very passionate photographer. He is also a very gifted director and videographer in the genre of dance. Just two months ago, his body of work was selected by the Red Bull Dance Competition to be exhibited in Seoul, Korea. In fact, he is the only representative from Singapore. Imagine a student from Singapore, from Seoul, having his work exhibited at the world's largest breakdance event. I think that is quite an achievement. We have another student by the name of Ashton So, who came in top in the annual Koba Awards in the category of Digital Imaging and Experimental Photography. This Go Award has boosted his confidence tremendously and has put So as one of the top 10 schools in the Koba Awards 2013. Hi, my name is Jim. Uh, currently, I'm working in City College as a facilities officer. Before I became a staff, I was first a student here. In 2006, I joined City College at the age of 25, which was 10 years after I was expelled by my secondary school for being involved in gang activities and fights. When I first started lesson here, uh, I found it very weird with a class full of kids that were much younger than me. Within a short time, I was back to my own ways. I was almost expelled by the school for injuring my classmates. In any other school, I would have been expelled immediately. Instead, Mr. Kenny called me up to his office and reasoned it out with me. Never has a principal or teacher been so kind and patient towards me. So I did as he said. The teachers in City College were very creative in their teaching. I think their genuine concern towards the student is something that is very obvious in all the teachers and staff of City College. When I graduated, they were not just my teachers, they became my friends. And the school had never given up on me, though I didn't do well in 2007. They believed in me and gave me a scholarship to repeat my O-level in 2008, and I passed. I was once a neighbor gangster, and one of the reasons that I stayed with my gang was because they were always there for me. After I came to City College, the staff and the teachers here showed me a better way. They showed me that they truly care and I truly belong. And because of them, I found a reason to move on in life and change for the better. Here at City College, our main objective is not to produce the best scoring for the brainiest students, even though that's often a byproduct of their time with us. We want to give them a healthy image of themselves when they look into the mirror. Some kids, when they look at themselves, all they can see is someone unlovable, unteachable, somebody who can't win, maybe even undeserving of a future and a hope. At City College, we want to take them through a journey where their outlook toward life, toward themselves, go through a 180 degree change. 
you want them to believe that they can win, that they can set goals and achieve them. We want to help them to dream again. We want them to believe in their God-given potential. We want them to believe that they are not an accident, not a failure, but they have an actual purpose in life. And we want them to be happy, being the best that they can be in life. All right, okay, so that's, that's to try to condense what we do for you. In, in 2012 to 2014, we, we had this facility at uh, Bukit Merah. During that time, our, our, our intention of getting such a uh, big space, although it's, it's not so accessible, is really to tap into the international market. The idea was to use the profitable international students' fees to subsidize the local students' fees. But it didn't work out that well because we realized that the goals of the international students were very different from the local students. And then, in that season, uh, we also enhanced the Private Education Act in Singapore. The Council of Private Education came in to set a ruling on the schools that can give student passes. There are three criteria that schools need to have. Uh, first, they need to have good processes, standard processes, we're okay with that. Um, and then they need every school to be very profitable. We don't do very well in that because it is not designed to make money. And in 2012-13, they upped the bar for the profitability criteria. We don't fit the bar, so we don't no longer have the card to do that. So when that happened, it was a very tough time for us because we have a big space and we lose one whole part of the market. So I, I guess like through lie, I was telling my students, don't give up, don't give up. And then there was a time that I myself have to ask, how am I going to pick myself up again and not give up? And a lot of money is put into it. Now you know, I can't fill the, the classrooms. So it is something that I have to rebound from. So we went back, so we decided to let it go. We went, we went, back, to, we went back to Bugis. We started at Bugis area. Uh, and then we redesigned the program again one more time. See, after 10 years, back to the drawing board. You must have the courage to start over if it's worth it, right? Start over again. We downsize by about 10 times in terms of our space. So that we can afford a Bugis space that's right across the MRT station. But it felt good. Because once again, we can be focused you know, on the group of people that we want to help, which are the locals. So we decide to let something Go. Although the intention of it right, was, was good, it's for sustainability that we try to have a strategy, but it put the staff too much, so we decided to, to let it go. So how do I handle that failure? It was very tough. But in the Bible, there's a saying that says, love never fails. If you do things out of love, you will, will not fail. So I used to have a student and back in the founding days, when I first noticed her, she had cuts. Are you okay for another story or, or two? Are you all right? Okay. Cuts on her hands, you know. So, so I asked a counselor to counsel her and all that. And then later I found that she had a very challenging background. Her mother was, was paralyzed, nursing at home. Father abuses her, but mother loves father. So, can't report the father, you know, the, 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 the issue, all right? Sister have to quit the polytechnic to work in order to support the whole family. And then she was the one that, that is like left to do the education part, which she felt very burned. That's why the only way she can feel pain to be a part of her family is to cut herself. So I tried all means to try to help her. She would just go from swings to swings try to take her life twice. Twice I was at the hospital for 3 a.m. I have to call up my friend to ensure that he don't, she don't get sent to IMH and, and, and all that. And then eventually she took the O-levels in the hospital, didn't do as well, and then I paid for her education to go to MDIS during the time we don't have a diploma program. So I paid. After a few months, she can't make it, she dropped out. So, and then I, I, I just, I have tried everything. I even become her godfather. <laughs> because I know it's a fatherhood issue then, but I felt that 
cannot really is 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 too much, you know. So so I say, you know, okay, all right. I think I have to just trust that she will be all right. Interestingly, okay, a few months later, she seek for help at the IMH. She admitted herself, you know, start to be treated, you know, for her depression and all that. And in, in the hospital, she met another girl that has problems like her, okay? And this girl eventually came to City College and eventually become my top student, all right? So she's the top student, you know, in one of the years because of something that I saw during that time, okay? All right? So sometimes the things that we do, we may not see an immediate outcome. Doesn't mean that, I mean, to a certain extent, we have failed, but I think life on Earth is not just about maximizing resources, but about maximizing our time and, and what we feel like want to do, we should go and do it. Right. Years back, when I was running for the Schwab Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award, the night before, uh, I had a talk because the person before me was, the previous winner before me was Mr. Jackson, founder of WTO, World Toilet Organization. <laughs> so Jack is like, Ooh, fanboy and Jack is big, you know. So I was sitting in my office and then and then the voice came on inside me and like, Kenny, do you really think you can change the world? You are just taking in some students that some schools doesn't want and you're just offering hip hop classes. How can you stand on the same stage as Jack Sim, who is like world toilet? organization. So no soft world sanitation problem, you know, save people by the millions. How can you change the world? So I was like a bit like, ah oh, yeah, I know I don't think I don't think I can. I know I deserve to win this and don't think this big shoes wear. And then a voice another voice came inside me, so I'm a Christian, I believe that is like God's voice. And then and, and this this wisdom say, 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 Kenny, you don't have to change the world. I never asked you to change the world. All you have to do is to change your world. That means what I have to do is to change my world. So if my world are students that because of their pens cutting, the school cannot take them in, have to, because of their body art, they can't find education, and then they just come to me, and I just have that, that's my world. If my world it's about helping people that are good at hip hop dancing to have a job and that be it. So I'm doing something to change my world. So if collectively we change our world, then we will change the world. We don't have to, you know, right? Don't have to go to Africa to feed the poor. Just go to one or you know, join one of the CDC's program. That will do. All right? Don't, don't have to go too far. Don't have to fly ticket. No, no, no. We need here, have ready. Right? Here need help, right? Yeah, a lot, right? It's wh whether we want to see or not. Right? So with that, I thank you for your time and I hope this session has been helpful for you. Thank you.